so friends in this video we'll talk about seven methods or seven ways how we can implement network security in our networks these are some very common ways to protect ourselves you might have heard things like jump servers honey pots dns sinkhole all these things we'll discuss today so don't miss this video go and watch this video if you get any value out of it don't forget to hit the like button and at the end of the video do comment what you learned from this video and what you would want to learn next so here you go so the first method to implement network security is implementing a jump box server it is a very common way to create a abstraction between your actual servers and someone accessing those servers from outside for example if there are some special users like administrators network administrators or any other user who would want to access your web server print server or the file server that person rather than directly taking control of these servers from uh, his or her laptop would actually first log in to the jump box server and from this particular jump box they will uh, be able to access all the subsequent services how it helps it helps because yeah, this particular jump box server creates a choke point because if suppose there is any hack which happens or any issue or anything which happens uh, you know you could completely keep auditing this particular jump box for any such activity because you are creating that level of uh, abstraction between the external uh, client machines and your actual server so this jump box servers are very heavily audited for any malicious activity any user who wants to go and access anything has to be present on the jump box a very effective and a simple way to make sure that there is some level of separation between uh, your external network and your internal network so this is how jump box works the second way we can uh, protect our network is by using honey pots and honey nets now you can correlate this with a real life example of a mouse trap so what we do we put a cheese and we ask the mouse to come and pick that cheese so that we can trap uh, the mouse then and there uh, similarly in uh, in creating honey pots the uh, system administrators and cybersecurity experts would intentionally expose a specific machine and make it look lucrative for an attacker so as you can see in this diagram uh, everything is within uh, protected uh, within the network but this particular uh, machine has been kept outside so that any attacker who's sniffing into the network could uh, think it uh, think of it as a potential uh, vulnerability in the network and tries to attack it but as soon as uh, that is attacked uh, they don't know that there is no connectivity of this particular machine with the network and uh, it, this particular machine will be audited by the cyber security uh, experts continuously so that if the, any such malicious activity happens they can stop it and they can understand uh, the type of attack uh, which has happened so it's a very interesting concept uh, honey nets is just an extension of honey pot so instead of having a single machine if you have a set of machines and you have a network of machines which are working together then it becomes a honey net or honey network whatever you say so this would be uh, acting as a, a separate subnet uh, within your larger network and it would be co completely se separate from your main network so this is the second method the third method is using access control list now access control list is a set of rules which you form uh, using which you can manage granular user access on your network devices on your switches on your routers and also on your files on your operating system so basically there are two types of acls uh, file system acls and network acls file system acls you would correlate more easily because whenever we are working or operating on uh, your windows operating system or for your network uh, linux operating system you would understand that we manage our access control lists there so it is just that we decide that okay for bob it would be a read write permission for alicia it would be write and for something like a bot it would be a deny so acls are very important because it uh, you know it manages all the granular access very seamlessly and you don't have to manage every user okay you can create the acls and then using those acls you can manage all the access so very important method to ensure that you are not having any malicious activity uh, being done by any um, attacker so the fourth uh, method is black hole now what is black hole black hole in the universe is a region uh, where the gravity is so much that even light or electromagnetic waves could not escape it everything gets absorbed in it and nothing comes out 
so that is a black hole similar concept is applied in the networks when we uh, you know when we create uh, an environment wherein there is no response uh, which is coming back to the attacker because attacker always feeds on the response of any network device or any server coming back to him so that he or she can establish that okay yeah i am getting that response and now i can further infiltrate into that particular uh, device but in black hole concept we route it to some random machine or some dedicated machine where where there is no activity nothing so that attacker does not get any response so i'll explain you this uh, using uh, a variation of black hole which is called as dns sinkhole technique so in, uh, so take this is a normal scenario so suppose there is a malicious website vamp.net um, you log into that you go to the dns server dns uh, dns server gets the dns record send it back to you with the ip address of that particular website and then you connect to that particular website on that uh, ip address on that ip address you go and then obviously there will be a uh, risk because now because you have sent the response attacker could now go and infiltrate into your uh, machine but in dns sinkhole something different happens so in dns sinkhole instead of giving this uh, ip address here um, we will intentionally route this to uh, another ip address which is for example 2.2.2.2 so when the request goes to the dns server dns understand that this is a malicious activity happening so instead of sending the ip address of this malicious device or malicious attacker uh, DNS server would respond with a new IP which is 2.2.2. So now DNS server will respond with this new IP address which is 2.2.2.2. So instead of request going to this server, so this is the uh, attacker's machine for example or attacker's uh, environment. So the request instead of going here will, uh, will be routed to something in within the network or some other device which is a safer device. So in DNS sinkhole, we reroute the request from going towards a malicious device or malicious website or malicious server to another machine which we have dedicatedly created to absorb such request. So this avoids any engagement between our client and the attacker uh, because any request which is coming from the DNS is getting routed to another device which is which can be called as a DNS sinkhole device. So this is an effective way to break the communication link between the attacker and the target. The fifth method is using RBAC, which is role-based access control, a very popular method, especially on cloud nowadays. It's similar to ACLs, but we go to the next level here because in here, we are not assigning users direct permissions. We are creating dedicated roles and we assign permissions to these uh, specific roles and then we apply these roles to specific users. So for example, I have a role which is called as VM admin. Another role is VM user and VM engineer. There would be set of permissions uh, which would be assigned to this particular role. So VM admin could switch on the uh, machine, switch off the machine, apply patches and all that. VM user could only take the remote desktop. VM engineer could run the antivirus checks. All those kind of granular permissions would be given to these roles so that whenever you want to apply any specific granular access control or granular security profile you don't have to go to every user you can simply take those users and uh, assign to these groups which you will create you can call these as security groups as well but so eventually these roles would be the collection of all the permissions which you manage so when you apply role based access control you have finer control to what you allow or disallow a user to do especially on cloud platform. I have created a dedicated video on Google Cloud IAM and you would understand this in more detail if you watch that video. So the sixth one is blocking unused port I, and I cannot tell you how much negligent we become whenever we spin up a machine because we keep all the default ports open which is again a vulnerability and a threat. That's why when you run commands like nmap you can get the list of what are the active listening ports on your server and you have to ensure that only the ports which are needed are open and rest all needs to be closed. The seventh and the last method is patching. Every time whenever there is a new threat which comes in this world, there will always be a patch which will be needed to counter that particular threat. That's why all the administrators, all the network administrators and system administrators have to continue patching the machines, your operating systems, your network devices, because these patches will have all the fixes for all the new threats which are coming uh, in the world today. So that's why regular patching your machines with new service packs, new fix packs would help 
uh, help make it more secure uh, guys these were seven common methods with which we implement network security so friends i hope you liked this video if you did please hit the like button hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you exactly know when i upload my next video and until next time guys keep learning keep sharing all your knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now